want to consider with you a very well-known passage of Scripture. If I give you the first two words, most of you will be able to complete the sentence. Are you ready? Be still, you guess correctly, and know that I am God. This text is found at the conclusion of an ancient scripture song written by the sons of Korah. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, verse 10. Some proponents of New Age philosophies would interpret the text as follows. Be still and know that, that I am God. Back in the late 1980s, actress Shirley MacLaine, whom some considered a high priestess of the New Age movement, delighted a large television audience when standing with open arms on the shore of the Pacific Ocean, began to sing, I am God, I am God, I am God. Is that what the text is telling us? Should we all start chanting, I am God? No, you don't have to read much of this psalm before you are reminded that you are not God. It doesn't start by saying, you are your own refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. <laughs> Listen to the inspired scripture song by the sons of Korah. I read Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The rest of the Bible clearly testifies that we are not God. Listen to these words of the Lord recorded by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading the Lord speaking, You are my witnesses, Isaiah 43, verse 10, says the Lord, My servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. Friends, we are not God. The Lord, He is God. Shirley MacLaine and all the New Agers who hold the view that they are God are wrong. So what does the text mean when it says, be still and know that I am God? Well, I want to focus on the first verb there in Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still. The sons of Kor, writing this psalm under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, don't use the common Hebrew verb damam, which means to be quiet or to be silent. The Hebrew verb used here in Psalm 46 verse 10 is rafa, and its root meaning is literally to let go. Let go and know that I am God. There are some who say, translate, stop striving, stop fighting, and know that I am God. That idea of calming down and knowing that I am God. Some Bible commentators suggest this word of the Lord is actually addressed to the enemies of God, spoken of in Psalm 46, verse 9, whose bows and spears he will break and whose chariots he will burn. They would translate the text, Get your hands off my people and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And that's certainly an interesting and possible explanation. But I would suggest to you that the Lord is also, and perhaps primarily speaking, to those who have faith in him. God is responding to those who cry out, God is my refuge and strength, <laughs> a very present help in trouble. To those who put their trust in him, the Lord makes this appeal. Let go, calm down, <laughs> be still, and know that I am God. And that's needed counsel for each one of us, isn't it? Living in this frantic life, 
24-7, 365 on the go, the Lord says, let go, slow down, calm down. But there's another key verb here in Psalm 46, verse 10 that's really important. It's the verb translated to know. Be still and know that I am God. This is much more than knowing about God or having a kind of an intellectual knowledge of God. The Hebrew verb sakal means to know about or to understand, but the verb that's used here in this ancient scripture song is yada, which means to know in the context of relationship. I hear the Lord saying to us in this ancient inspired scripture song, slow down, calm down my child, and enjoy an intimate relationship with me. What a precious invitation. And it's a life-changing relationship that we all desperately need, isn't it? The psalmist David described this experience of slowing down, calming down, and experience an intimate relationship with God in another scripture song in Psalm 131. I want you to listen to his words, again, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. The psalmist David writes, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. That, I believe, is the picture of someone responding to God's invitation to slow down, calm down, and enjoy an intimate relationship with God. Jesus, in the last book of the Scriptures, the book of Revelation, also offers an invitation for us to enjoy an intimate relationship with Him. Perhaps you know the text in Revelation 3, verse 20, where he says, Behold, I stand where? That's right, at the door of your heart. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him, come into her, dine with you, and you with me. That's an intimate experience, isn't it? sharing a common meal, spending quality time together. When our two sons were still in elementary school, our family returned to my homeland of England. and We were walking near the Royal Albert Hall in downtown London, when suddenly we saw a Rolls Royce drive by. <laughs> now that's not too unusual in that part of London, but this Rolls Royce was displaying a royal flag and had a motorcycle escort. As the car passed, we noticed Queen Elizabeth II in the back seat. We were so excited. We told all of our friends about the memorable experience when we returned home to the United States of America. But imagine how we would have felt if the Rolls Royce had stopped backed up to where we as a family were standing, the window had lowered, and the queen had invited us to share a meal with her. <laughs> now, that would have been really exciting. Why? Because sharing a meal together is so much more intimate than having someone drive by at 35 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour. If sharing a meal with an earthly monarch would have been amazing, how much more amazing is it to have the Lord God, sovereign of the universe, invite us to slow down, calm down, and enjoy an intimate relationship with Him? So friend, how can we accomplish that? How can we slow down, calm down, be still, and enjoy, enjoy a more intimate relationship with God? That's an especially important question for people like myself who are constantly busy. They didn't have a diagnosis for me when I was a little boy. They just said I had ants in my pants. 
But I'm not the only one who's rushed, stressed, and busy. I'm not the only one who needs to hear this word from the Lord, am I? We all need to slow down, calm down, be still, and make more room for an intimate relationship with God. Would you agree? So what would our lives look like in the days ahead, in the months ahead, if we slowed down, calmed down, if we were still, in order to enjoy more fully an intimate relationship with God? Well, I'm fairly certain most of us would watch less television, spend less time on social media. We might ask God to help us to let go of a long list of assignments and activities that He never asked us to do in the first place. I believe that we would take more time in places where we can learn about God and celebrate an intimate relationship with Him. We'd probably seek out new friends and, and affirm old friends who were also making a conscious commitment to slow down, calm down, be still, and experience an intimate relationship with God. We might even decide to spend more time out in nature and less time in artificial environments. Friend, an intimate relationship with God won't happen by accident. It will take an intentional choice, a conscious choice to slow down, calm down, be still, quiet your soul so you can enjoy intimacy with your Creator and Redeemer. So I have an invitation for you today. Take a moment right now. Think of one way that you can consciously slow down, calm down, and make more room for God. Consider how you can practice putting God first today, this week, and in the weeks to come. Let me pray a blessing for you today. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the invitation recorded in this ancient scripture song, an invitation from you to be still and to know that you are God. And I pray that you would help us, guide us by your Holy Spirit in practical ways that we may intentionally make more room for a life-changing fellowship with you. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.